The self-righteousness of white privilege has created this environment. Let me explain what I mean exactly to you. Because for so long, you said, not us, you said, and when I say you, I'm not just talking about white people, I'm talking about the, the white systems of supremacy have said, oh, you did something bad in your background, you got arrested, you did the wrong thing, that's why you can't get a job 20 years from now. You created that, just to, to, to be clear. You created a system and a, and a place where people don't are able to get jobs because of, I'm not going to call it mistakes, because of things that they did 10, 20, 30 years ago. You're the one that said if you have a record, don't keep that record, whatever with them. So now that that same purity test is being used with your people, now it's a problem. Now when we say, well, wait a minute, if he raped somebody, I don't care how great of a president he is. If he had a slave, I don't care how great of a president is. Take down the statue. That's your purity test. That's, that's the purity test that you created. So now that the roosters have come home to crow, Malcolm X, don't get mad because you've created a world where, in this country, where people really were not given grace. That's the funny thing about this. Now we want to say, oh, well, look at all the good deeds he did in his life. I can, I can open up my network and show you how many people there are in my life that I know who've made poor, bad choices, including myself. Yet have all these other great things, but because of bad, poor choices, you're holding that over their head to keep them from getting jobs. Thank God I haven't been locked out of that, but... It, that's just by the grace of God. Been locked out of jobs, in some cases locked out of schools, you kept them out of industries, kept them from occupations, all because of poor choices that they made. And you didn't look at the totality of that person. So why should we do that with these historical figures? Now, I'm the first one to say people can rebound, people can turn, people can change, people can be better. You shouldn't just look at the negative parts of one person's life. But if we're going to do that, we have to do that with everybody. So if we're going to say, you know what, keep the statue of George Washington up. Keep promoting him as a great person in history. Because even though he had slaves, and he was beating them, and he was raping some of them, he still built this country. And that's what we need to focus on. If we're going to say that for him, let's say that for the young black guy down the street. Who, because he sold drugs, he now has a strike on his record. And you're asking him 20 years later to fill out a job application and say, oh, 20 years ago you sold drugs? Oh, that's why you can't get this job. Where is the fairness in that? My, my point is, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. And if you want to create a system where grace is allowed, then give grace. It, then give grace. Give grace to people. So it's funny. When the whole Me Too movement, and I think this is the reason why there was so much anger that came out of the Me Too movement, particularly from the white structures in place, because it was them that were the targets of it. So now it was like, oh, you mean to tell me that just because I sexually assaulted somebody 10 years ago, you're going to fire me from my job now? But they were doing it to our people for hundreds of years. It's like, you, you, you gotta, you can't, Keep, you cannot continue to build a society where there's such a double standard. So I just think it's funny now. That's what gets me. I'm hearing all this stuff about, well, you know, so what? That they had that, that negative parts in their life. Look at the positive parts. And this is the at the end of the day. Whether George Washington's statue lives or goes down, he never paid for that in his life. That's the, that's the real truth of the matter. Who cares about the statue now? Because he already lived. He was already celebrated in life. He already got away with what his deeds were on earth. Now, I believe in a just God that, that, that hey, you may have gotten away on earth. But the point is, how about all of the young men and women in this country who made poor choices, that didn't rise to the level of keeping somebody in slavery, didn't rise to the level of raping somebody, didn't rise to the level of destroying somebody's entire existence as slavery had died. And we can't find the good in them. We can't, we, we it's, it's, it's okay to say, one guy came to me 
And I understood his anger. I really did. It wasn't just his hurt. It was his anger. He said, how can I get ahead? They keep asking me to talk about this drug conviction that I had. And it's 30 years ago. This man is 50 years old and he's still on applications. And he believes, and I believe too, being told, they're finding other reasons to say he didn't get the job. You know how people do. Oh, we didn't have the experience. He didn't but he believes, and I believe too, because I'm looking at some of these roles that he's applying for. He's not applying for, you know, vice president of marketing at Home Depot. He's applying for pretty basic positions, and he's locked out of getting basic employment. And he said, what do they expect me to do? This is what he said to me. He was like, even when I try to get ahead, I feel like I can't. I feel like I should just go back to selling drugs because that's the only way I can make a living for my family. And so here this man is 30 years later. Can you imagine that? Still answering questions about something that happened. It was a drug conviction. And so the same way that people say, oh, well, but those people did bad, but they also did good. Okay, can't we see that in everybody? That's all I'm saying. I, I, so, yeah, I made it a little bit controversial to say, throw down the statues, but I'm trying to make the overall point. If we judge them by the same standard you're judging people now, I don't think there'd be a statue left in America. You know, I, I love how we put words to stuff. Cause you know how we do, we use language to make the deed sound better. Like people get me with Thomas Jefferson. You know, I went to Morehouse College and one of my friends who went to Spelman, she was actually a descendant of Sally Hemings. They did testing and everything. Her, her family is descendant from Sally Hemings and Thomas Jefferson. People get me, he had a mistress, he had a slave, he was raping. Let's call it what it is. Like, let's just be honest. I'm not saying that now that means we tear down a statue, but you know, you, you see how we do? You see how we attribute language and words to make things better when really we don't call the thing the thing. He had a mistress. What do you mean he had a mistress? He had a slave who did what he told them to do when he told them to do it. That's not, that's not giving your body of your free will. But it's funny how we, we kind of, oh, they were saying, and this is my favorite growing up. I used to love this. They would say they had slaves, but they didn't beat them. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, that's what the taskmasters were for. But you see how we do these things? But the same way that we love to give them grace and they're dead and gone, let's give grace to people that are living. Let's give grace to people that made poor decisions when they were in college. Well, maybe because of poor decisions, they couldn't go to college. They made poor decisions when they were 20, when they were 25, when they were 30, when they were 35. They did the wrong thing. Why are we still holding their feet to the fire? I'm going to give you another example. I don't even know why I'm on this road, but I just feel the need to say it. Over 40% of professions in this country require a professional license. That's the next way that they keep people locked up. So like in New York, if you have a felony, you can't get a barber's license. Are you serious? What does having a felony have anything to do with cutting somebody's hair? Okay, I understand if you say they can't be a police officer, they can't have a top secret clearance, they can't sit in the White House and look at the national secrets. But you mean to tell me you can make an argument a, a, a for real argument that a person because they've had a felony on their record cannot be a barber. But this is the stuff we do in America. And then the same people that created those systems to lock people out then want to turn and say, that's what gets me angry. Then turn and say, well, you know, so what? They, they had some, or they did that other stuff. Keep up their statue because it's a part of history. I, I, don't, I don't give a dag on about your history because that's your history. Let's talk about fairness. If we're going to hold people's feet to the fire for things they did 20 years ago or 30 years ago and they're living today, we're going to hold their feet to the fire in the same way for the other people. I don't care what else they did. I don't care if they were the first president or the 20th president. But right now, we're not addressing people, we're addressing systems. And this is what I'll leave on. The Bible, the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities 
and rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. This is beyond Republican and Democrat. This is beyond, well, let's just put another president in. No, 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 no. It's a system that needs to be addressed. It's a system that Congress still has to debate about a lynching bill for real. We still are on the side of trying to figure out is lynching a crime or not? When drug possession is a crime, when smoking weed is a crime, but yet hanging somebody, we still got a debate about.